In this film, we will show you the reasons for why Life Cycle Assessment, or LCA, is an important tool, an important methodology that serves as a basis for emission calculations as those are, that are made in MTM calculation tool. We will start by taking you back to the mid-90s, where environmental managers in big transport companies were battling about who tra whose transport most mode was the best in environmental concerns. There was a lot of consultancy reports and research results showing different, different things. One, for example, said that th there is no environmental benefit of moving goods from road to rail, while another claiming that environmental reasons give rail transport advantages. Buses are cleaner than trains. And finally, environmental costs are the lowest for trains. And it is, of course, very frustrating and interesting to try to find out what is the reasons for this? Why does different serious research organizations come to different conclusions? When we looked into this and those reports in those days, we found there was a big difference in how you calculated electricity production from that was running the trains. You could actually use different arguments on how to, how to use different production methodologies. One is that you use the marginal production. And the reason for this is that electricity is produced basically in the same moment as it is consumed. So the next time you use electricity somewhere in the system, there's an electricity production plant that increases its production. And in this methodology, you claim that the, the most fast and accurate way to produce electricity and in at the marginal is by using fossil coal-fired or oil-fired electricity plants. The other way is to use a national average and in Sweden the national average electricity production is 50 percent hydropower and 45 percent nuclear power and about five percent fossil power. Using the national grid gives a totally different result than using marginal, as you can see in this picture. You could also claim that electricity is traded between regions and between countries. And as the grid is connected, you should use the average for the regional set in instead. And as you can see, that also gives a totally different value. Um, at the same period of time, there was other other consultants who who wanted to show life cycle assessment of Swedish electricity production. The energy company Vattenfall produced this data on how their production is, is produced. Um, they also added what they call bra miljöval. That is that you can by a contract claim that I am only using wind power or hydropower in my in my production. And that will give you a basically a zero emission. And of course, that was helpful for the train industry to use that as, a, as an average or an um, emission calculation. Um, but not only could you use the zero emission, but even if you wanted to use the national mix, you see that the two different reports show totally different values. One is 40 grams per megajoule of electricity, and the other only seven. And we were interested to find out what the reason for this was. And the m largest reason was how the fuel for nuclear energy was produced. In the Vattenfall case, they started the life cycle assessment at the Swedish border, and that meant that the uranium was enriched and ready to use in the nuclear power plants. In the Swiss study above, 
they were calculating also the mining, the production of uranium and the enrichment of uranium and all the energy consumed in that enrichment. The result was obviously a big difference between the two. Another example of the importance of choosing a correct, fair and relevant system boundary can be shown in this example. This shows an example of comparison between a person going between Stockholm and Gothenburg for a meeting, either with a bus and aircraft or with a train. All the two persons can use a video conference and the video conference equipment can be used five hours per month or 30 hours per month. And as you can see from this chart, it is, would be in this case better to go by train than to actually use a video conference unless you use it at least 30 hours per month. Now in this case you can see from the baseline there that the comparison is according to the EPS method where CO2 is a dominating factor and it is comparing construction, transport, operation and residue management for the telecom equipment and the network compared to the operation of aircraft, bus and trains and wagons. So you can see that this is the total system boundaries for the video conference process and actually only operation for the train or the aircraft. Now in the report this is very clearly stated so if I would have been a train lobbyist I could easily use this report as a argument for using train. While if you do this serious like this uh, like this report has done this is very clear that you have different system boundaries in this. Um, and if you want to do this more equal and fair you should look at for example adding the infrastructure for train transport and as you can see in this picture, the little black line is what is running the train and the larger white one, about 90% of the total environmental impact is actually producing and running the infrastructure. And if that would be added to our previous comparison, we, should have, we could have a totally different result. In the Swiss report and also as you saw in the Swedish report the electricity production in those countries are very low. In this case zero. And if you use electricity production from other countries in Europe the, d the outcome will be very different as well. A final example on the importance and difficulties of, of choosing the right system boundaries is an example of wine ethanol that is used to produce ethanol for, uh, for the transport sector in buses and in, in lorries and cars. In the late 90s this was how we, we produced ethanol for vehicles in Sweden. A large majority of the ethanol came from surplus wine in the southern Europe in Europe we produced more wine that we could drink or sell to other nations. So it was a residue. It was a waste product. And the reason for why we produced this much wine was a political decision by made by the European Union to support wine farmers. Um, and making a life cycle assessment of this was difficult. And as you can see for the first case this is when wine is considered as a waste product. And the second case is when wine is regarded, the, the environmental impact is from the total system. That is wine and grape production, uh, fermentation, and finally distilling the wine to a motor fuel. So what is the correct answer on this one? Well, it doesn't exist a correct answer. It depends on your subjective values. What do you think that the wine is? Is it a residue and otherwise would be poured out? 
or is it a correct system boundaries to include all the production of wine? If you want to compare wine ethanol in buses with buses run on diesel or natural gas. And as you can see from this, it totally depends on your value, how you want to, your choice. So life cycle assessment can be very difficult in many ways and the same data can be interpreted in many different ways. And in the next movies, we will go through the LCA methodology and how those subjective choices can be made. Thank you for watching.